Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'd just like to reinforce some of what has already been said. Uh, there's a saying, I'm from the United States of America, and that we have a saying, all politics is local. And the big news this weekend was something we already knew, actually, that Hillary Clinton was starting her campaign for president. And the way that she started it is by going in a van to Iowa to you know, meet local people and to get them to vote for her. But we all know that whether or not she makes it to the White House, um, when you have a problem with schools or with housing, with potholes and roads and whatnot, uh, you don't really contact the president or the prime minister. You really, um, in most cases, contact your mayor. And uh, we view in UNCTAD uh, that it's important to also engage mayors and city leaders as well as uh, important stakeholders. You know, as we have discussions on development, a lot of development will be at the local level. And it's important that we um, hear their voices and that we um, have this bottom-up approach where, where we hear more from mayors in these, in these discussions. And if we look at some of the uh, data, you know, the, um, there's the Global Cities Initiative of the Brookings Institution and J.P. Morgan Chase. And they found that metropolitan economies with the fastest growth rates in 2014 were concentrated in developing countries. Three quarters of the fastest growing met metropolitan economies were located in the developing Asia Pacific and Eastern Europe and Central Asia regions, while 83% of the slowest growing metro economies were in developed regions. So as we continue to see um, developing countries, their economies grow, um, a lot of this growth will be in the cities and in developing countries. But one point that comes back to the presentation we had by Saskia Sassen is that uh, differences in growth rates uh, seem to be connected to the nature of economic activities in the metro areas. So some of the areas where we had some of the greater growth was, were those specialized in commodities, as well as utilities, manufacturing, trade, and tourism. And so it's important that as we see this growth that it be done in a sustainable manner in order for us not to have the adverse impacts on the environment and uh, in the social uh, context. Now, one a statistic that's already shared is that cities are going to grow so that about 70% of people will live in urban areas by the year 2050. That means that cities will be absorbing another 3 billion people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this growth um, will require investment because more than 60% of the total area that is expected to be urban in 2030 still remains to be built. So that means in the next 15 years, you're going to be seeing, uh, again, uh, substantial construction in order to meet uh, these, these infrastructure needs. And uh, we, as we talked in, UNCTAD, in our World Investment Report uh, last year, there's a substantial gap in order to meet the sustainable needs of developing countries. We're looking at about two and a half trillion dollars every year in order to help uh, developing countries meet what is needed in order to uh, support sustainable development. Now, one thing uh, that we see is that it's not just about building all this infrastructure, but we also need to work with existing infrastructure and with existing buildings. So that means we need to uh, retrofit and regenerate existing cities in addition to this additional construction that's going to take place. Um, one statistic that we've also heard is that cities need to optimize the whole value chain of electricity de delivery. More than 70% of electricity is lost before it ever reaches end users due to inefficiencies in electricity value chain. So we can make a substantial difference just by working with the infrastructure we already have and making it more effective, you know, getting energy uh, plugged into the grid and so on. I know we don't have much time, but I think uh, some important uh, concepts as you work over the next uh, 15 years in sustainable development is that we need to improve the management and capacity at the city level. You know, uh, we had a, a guest speaker say that cities with a long-term plan always do better, even if they don't follow the plan. You know, that cities really need to have a plan in place in order to achieve this progress. We need to work with cities to improve their, their management, also transparency, protection for investors, and, uh, and so on. Now, as you know, we're, we're very excited that it, it's likely that there will be a sustainable development goal on cities. You know, at number 11, uh, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. And uh, after the agreement of sustainable development goals, the first major United Nations meeting is going to be UNCTAD's next conference in March in Lima, where we're going to be uh, discussing uh, the next four years of UNCTAD's program. And that's also going to be the first major opportunity for, um, for leaders to discuss what the new sustainable development goals are and what, what can be done in those areas. But if we have the indicators in whatever shape they form, that will also mean that we need to work with cities to the capacity to be able to provide the statistics at the city level, to be able to measure progress at the city level, ensure that uh, they're achieving these targets. Um, we could obviously talk a lot more about that, but I think 
those are some of the main points uh, that we'd like to bring at this time.